Hi everyone. So this video is slightly different from all our other videos. This is not going to be a lead code solution uh, video. We are actually going to solve a problem related to multi-threading. So this was being requested by one of our subscribers. So I thought of implementing this. Before proceeding, I'm assuming you already know how to create a thread class, how to create an object, how to run a thread. In case you don't know um, basic concepts of thread or you already know basic concepts but want to learn more advanced topics like uh, cyclic barrier, countdown ledge, please uh, leave out a comment and I'll create a series on this. Okay, so for now let's go through the problem statement. Problem statement says Write a program explaining multiple threads working together to solve a problem. Create an array of 100 elements with random numbers. Create 5 threads which take part of elements from data array. Those threads should compute squares and cubes for those respective values. Print result of squares and cubes after all the process threads complete their execution. So there are 5 steps. We will first implement the first one creating an array of 100 elements with random numbers okay so this is our main class and in our main method we are creating an array with 100 elements so i've kept this as configurable like if in case you want to run this program for not 100 but say 1000 elements you can directly change it here or you can take the uh, uh, parameter n as an input uh, command line input as well. So uh, to initialize the array with random elements, I have created a helper function. So uh, here in this method, I am in, uh, creating an array of size n and then I'm running a loop for i equals to zero to i less than array length. And then uh, for each of the array index, I am assigning a random value which could range from 0 to 1000. So to assign the random uh, value, I am using random class of util package. So um, after execution of this function, in my array, I will have 100 elements that would be random. So we are done with the first step. Now next is to create a thread which would compute squares and cubes for part of elements. So now let's, uh, before proceeding further, let's create a thread class which would ex actually do these compute computations. So I have created this class compute thread which extends thread and uh, this actually need few inputs. One is array on which it is going to operate. One is, one is one more array uh, called squares where it will store square of uh, these array elements and the other is cubes array which would uh, which would store cube of array elements and then uh, since we want to compute part of array so it actually needs start and end index. So in our constructor here I'm initializing all these uh, all these parameters all these uh, variables. Then I have my run method where I'm running a loop starting from start index and ending till end index and computing squares and cubes of elements and storing them in their um, in respective arrays. So uh, my thread class seems to be fine. Now I need to create multiple objects of this th uh, thread class and have to run them in parallel. So uh, Problem statement says I have to create five threads. So I have kept this that as uh, also as configurable. So in case you want to run this pro, uh, program with 10 threads, you can simply change thread count. So here I'm creating an array of compute thread, but um, I'm creating only of size, which is minimum, a minimum either thread count or the array length. So in case my array length is say a 5 and my thread count is 10, I don't need extra 5 threads, right? At, an, at any point of time, I uh, the minimum amount of computation that a thread should do would be only processing one element. So I'm taking whatever is minimum, either thread count or array length. 
then uh, i'm running a loop starting from 0 to thread array length and um, i'm initializing each of the thread array um, index with compute thread passing array squares cubes start and end index to calculate start and end index i'm starting from 0 and then i'm computing range size okay so let's look at an example to understand more better on how will we pass out st uh, start and end for each of the array element so say our array length is 20 and we have three threads so first of all we'll find out range size which would which identi uh, signifies number of elements in each of our range so number of elements being processed by each of a thread so that we can simply get by dividing array length uh, by the thread count that we have so we divided 20 by 3 and we got 6.66 so we'll basically take the next uh, element in case we are getting result in decimal. So next element is 7. So um, this means that each of our thread will process 7 elements. So uh, during our first iteration, we'll start from 0 index and our end would be start plus range size minus 1. Why minus 1? Because our areas sta uh, start from 0, right? So um, in our first iteration, um, we get start as 0 and end as 6. So our first thread will process uh, elements between index 0 and 6. And then we'll um, increment our start by end plus 1. So our, now our st uh, we need to start from element next to end index. So that would be end plus 1, which is 7. So in our next iteration, our start is 7 our end would be start plus range size minus 1, which is 13. So our second thread will process all the elements between 7 and 13. And we again uh, changed our start to end plus 1, which is 14. So um, our next thread, that is third thread, will, uh, will start from 14. And and um, if we compute by the same method, start plus range size minus 1, we are getting 20, which is out of limit, right? So our um, array can have elements between 0 to 19. If we pass 20, that is out of bound. So we'll, uh, we will take minimum of n or array length. So this thread would process from 14 till 19. Okay. I hope this uh, this was helpful. Now let's jump back to code. So we are starting from zero. We are calculating our range size, that is array size divided by thread length. And then we are getting the next element, the next higher element in case of decimal. Uh, and, and we are calculating by same method, start pr plus range size minus one. But while passing, we are taking minimum of end or array length. Array length minus one because array starts from zero. And once we are um, once we have passed start and end to our object, we are initializing our start to end plus one. And um, now that we have our thread object ready, we are simply starting it. Okay, so. This actually solves first, second, and third point. First point of creating an um, array with random numbers, creating five threads, which will take array, part of array, and then compute squares and cubes. Now we are left with the last part, which is printing result of squares and cubes after all threads complete their execution. So uh, for now, let's forget this thing. Say um, we after once we have created our threads and started it, if we simply try to print um, print our array objects, so the, this is another helper method which actually takes your array, square array, cubes array, and print out the result. So in case um, we simply after creating and starting our threads, we simply um, you know jump onto print result. We will uh, 
our execute our threads would be in process and we'll start printing the result that would that that's not accurate right so we need some way to wait our main thread until all our uh, helper threads are done process so for this actually there is a method join of thread class which put the current thread on wait until thread on which it is called is completed so we are calling join method for all the threads in our thread array so basically our main thread would wait until execution of these threads are completed so now if we print result uh, it means that all threads have completed their execution and we have squares and cubes for each of the element that's it for the code now let's try running it so you can see we are able to see squares and cubes accurately for all the elements that were in our array. Uh, I don't know how uh, what would be the cube and square for these numbers, but we can verify the result for 12. Res um, square of 12 and a cube of 12 is accurate. That means all other elements square and cube is accurate, right? Um, as usual, I'll put out the link to uh, this problem solution um, in the comment section below. In case you want me to try any other video or any other topic that you would like, please leave out a comment in comment section and I'll try to create the video on that. Thanks for watching.